All right, who is here on Valerie Martinez? All right, and probation, this is an application. Court is calling 2022 CR 5304, State of Texas versus Valerie Martinez. Can I have parties approach and announce for the record for the state? Daniel Esquire from State of Texas. Defense? Jacqueline Lamerson from Ms. Martinez. And are you Valerie Martinez? All right, I'm gonna need you to speak up, okay? Counsel, I'm showing you the discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery in this case that you reviewed with your client? I have. I court, did and I have. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Martinez, I'm showing you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Next, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? We waive. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Hey, God, we're proceeding on count one and waiving count two. Any objection? None. Ms. Martinez, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, one gram of four grams? That's a third degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Judge. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? She does. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? She, will, she is and she was. Ms. Martinez, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at five years in the prison. There's a $1,000 fine. State recommends community supervision. There's restitution of $114 to the Bear County lab for testing. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes. Defense? Yes, Judge. The only um, addition I'd make is that the fine is to be probated. All right, that's correct. State? Uh, yes, that is a good one. Sean, you what's entitled waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes. Counsel, have there been any such motions? None, Judge. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. State is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of five years. There be a TAP evaluation, 150 hours community service restitution, and a drug court referral. Did you understand um, those were recommendations by the state, and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Then to the offense as charged in count one, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence? Eight all receipts to the one in all attachments. No objections. Ms. Martinez, I'm showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states' exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right. After reviewing states' exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Judge. We waive PSI. All right. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? No, just that she's committed to um, doing well and wants to do well on her probation. All right. Do you have any children? Yes, ma'am, I do. How many? Two. What are their ages? 22 and 17. And where's your 17-year-old? Um, she's at home. Who, who's with, with your son? Dad. With who? With my son. And there's no other adult in the house? No, just them. All right. When's the last time you were employed? Um, about eight years ago. Three Kids. what? Disabled, Judge. Yeah. All right. What's your disability? I have seizures and nerve damage on my right leg. How often are you using uh, meth and heroin? Um, yeah. Okay, let's let's it. not do that because you're here for meth and heroin. So, how often have you been using meth and heroin before you went to the jail? Heroin, I don't use meth. I would use it like here and there. 
thinking this is not a here and there meth use because I've read the police report. I read it's here and there. I... So you're getting a strange car with a guy you don't know just taking a ride from him and he just happens to have heroin and you just happen to have meth. I don't know anybody who's not under the influence who's accepting strange rides from people unless they're children. How old are you? I'm 38. So you're 38. So you're not accepting rides from complete strangers, which is what you told them in the police report that you didn't even know the driver. You were just accepting a ride. Who does that? So when the police arrested you, how often were you using meth? I was the grandma day. The grandma day. So why, why were you just not honest with me about that? Why are you pretending like you don't have a drug problem? Everybody on this planet has something that they're working through. We all hoped that whatever is not what we want it to be in our life, that we're working to improve that and improve who we are. I mean, you've already pled to a drug case. I've read the police report. So you're not sober. You're using drugs. And in order to become sober, you're going to have to admit that you first have been using drugs and that you have a problem. Otherwise, I can't help you. Otherwise, maybe you should just go to prison. So you just want to go to prison and do your time? I think she might have been confused. There was quite a bit of time from the arrest that she was out on bond until today um, and her arrest on the FTA. I don't think she was confused. I think she is trying to pretend like she doesn't have a drug problem. But it's obvious you do. So we're going to take care of it if you want it taken care of. She does. So, uh, counsel, has there been any thing that she's done to support her habit that would um, make her a bad, better candidate for Esperanza court? Because felony drug court, they have a waiting list. Um, I'm not aware of anything. I want to ask her recently. Um, in the past, it's fine. If, if it's something she's done in the past, that's good. I know we spoke to pretrial about... Um, potential she, I mean she talked to her child about potential just substance abuse treatment and stuff um, well what I'm saying is there's a certain um requirements for Esperanza court do you want to speak to her and see if she meets the requirements of Esperanza court um at this time I'm not aware of any judge okay all right this is what the court is going to do the court is going to sentence you to five years in the prison suspended and probated in prison to I mean suspended and probated for five years there's a thousand dollar fine probated. There's going to be a referral to the felony drug court. That'll be the first referral. Then it will be Esperanza court. That will be the second referral. I'm going to want a tap evaluation while in custody. And can that happen before the holidays, Judge? I would um, like to see her out for the holidays. It's not going to happen before the holidays. It's whatever they have available. Uh, they'll do it as quickly as they can. So uh, that TAP evaluation is to take place while in custody is to follow TAP recommendations. Judge, is there any way she, we can um, have an appointment for that? I just would hate, since we are granting her probation and saying that she is a candidate to be out, that she doesn't get to spend the holidays with her family. My, my fear for your client, Ms. Martinez, because she's been dishonest to the court, is that she's going to use. And here's the thing, be it heroin, be it meth, that could be the last time she uses. The drug test every single day as well. Yeah. So that'll be top evaluation while in custody. Follow the TAP recommendations. There should be regular reporting uh, by Zoom or in person. I'm going to want field visits upon release. Uh, and that'll be two times per month. And probation, if you wish to um, make one of those field visits for reporting, that can count for reporting. We're going to do the UA hotline until further notice upon release. 150 hours of community service restitution. 40 of those hours will be waived if you provide the COVID vaccination with booster. The court is not requiring you to do that. But if you do that, that will be waived. Proof of employment or disability within 40 days of release. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no contact with Gilbert Gonzalez. Uh, probation, is there anything she needs? You're on the UA hotline. How often would you like to test it? Once a week. And that'll be all. Uh, okay. And then, of course, regular reporting. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else you need from the court in order to be successful, Ms. Martinez? All right. I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? 
because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? All right, good luck to you. We can go off the record. I know you want to be out for the holidays. Everybody wants to be out for the holidays. But this is what I can tell you. You're trying to set up your future, right? And your children, 17 and 22, you can always celebrate the holidays after the holidays. Hmm? I mean, she. I think she knows about Santa Claus and everything. And she knows what Christmas is about. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. If you're all that your 17-year-old and 22-year-old have, you shouldn't be using meth. And you shouldn't be using meth because number one, it's not the right thing to do and your children are depending on you. And number two, you have uh, health issues where you shouldn't be using meth. And let me ask you this question. If you hired me as a babysitter for your 17-year-old and 22-year-old just to be there, because sometimes you want an adult in the house, right? To look after them, to make sure everything goes well, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say your attorney recommends me to do that and you check all of my references, they're great. And your children say, yeah, we like Stephanie. Let her come by whenever you can't be here to make sure everything is running well. And you decide to hire me. And as I'm leaving, I tell you, mm, I probably should let you know, I do gram a meth a day. Would you still want me looking after your 17 and 22 year old? No. That's the position you're in. You are that babysitter who's doing great with the children. And then I'm going to hire you. And then you turn around and tell me I've been using a gram of meth today. That's not good for your children. You understand? Yeah. And honestly, I don't know what would happen if I would release you. You may end up using, and that may end up being a bad batch and you may end up overdosing. Then what kind of holiday would that be for your children? Okay. okay. All right. Good luck to you. I just want to ask one more time to reconsider. I just think that there was confusion with the time of the offense versus today, um, which has been quite a bit of time um, to be successful in this probation and to trust in the process. I think that giving her the time out and allowing her to decide to do well and show this court that she can do well um, and she's willing to do daily UAs. Um, I, I don't think she was trying to be dishonest with this court at all. I do think she um, just didn't understand and the difference between then and now. Um, if there's just anything the court can consider, any condition, she'd be happy to meet to be able to spend the holidays with her family. All right, thank you. And I appreciate the argument that you've given counsel, but my ruling stands. Good luck with you. May I make excuse? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, who's here on Danny Acosta? Oh, and Norma. All right, who's here on Valerie Lorraine Martinez? Judge Court is calling 2022 CR 5304 State of Texas versus Valerie Lorraine Martinez. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state. Defense? Melissa Christian. All right. Are you uh, Valerie Lorraine Martinez? Yes. Did you review the uh, document entitled Motion to Revoke Community Supervision with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Are you the same Valerie Lorraine Martinez who's placed on community supervision in 2022 CR 5304 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, one gram to four grams on December 20th, 2022 for a term of five years. Is that you? Yes. All right. State. Violating condition number four in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Valerie Lorraine Martinez did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of December 2023 in January 2024 in violation of condition number four. How do you plead to that, true or not true? Um, and Your Honor, we waive the other violation alleged in the motion. Any objection? No. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number four, court could find it true, grant the motion, uh, and sentence you up to five years in the prison and up to a $1,000 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number four? Yes, sir. Court will find violation of condition number four true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is not, Your Honor. We are, the state is asking for revocation. I believe defense would like to be heard. All right, defense. Judge, uh, Ms. Martinez, uh, the court has given her many opportunities that she's 
she's had a couple of different things in the Esperanza court. Then she was ineligible, medically ineligible for one of the treatment programs that the treatment programs just not have not worked out for her. Um, she's actually asking the court to be placed just on regular probation um, and uh, to let her go forward. She's actually had 200 days credit from all these different times that she's been in and out of jail and waiting for beds and waiting for treatment facilities. So she'd just like to be placed on regular probation and, and go forth in that way. All right. Any objection to the court reviewing the court summary from probation? No, ma'am. No, ma okay. Thank you. Oh, I have it. Okay. All right. So they state in the court summary that you were given several opportunities for treatment and to get back into compliance because I know with the treatment courts, if you abscond and they get you back with a certain time frame, they still want to work with you. They said they tried outpatient treatment with you, sober living with you, uh, all of the Esperanza court resources. There's nothing else that can be done for you. And if you could not follow through that program, there's no reason for me to believe that you would follow through on probation. You'll still have the same problems. It appears that you've just been running from your problems, running from treatment and continuing to use drugs. So I don't believe probation, that you're a good candidate for probation. Everything has been tried with you. I, I've been cooperating and I have been clean. No, no. no according to this, Esperanza Court removed you from their program. Uh, I know, and I'm not taking any consideration, but I've, you absconded. I've been three, three months outpatient rehab. I did complete the rem, remote, um, recovery and motion program. I got my certificate. All right. So here's the thing. If we could all write our own program, we wouldn't be here. If you could write your own program to remain clean and sober, guess what? You wouldn't be on probation for possession one to four grams. If you could write your own program to be clean and sober, guess what? You never would have tested positive while you're on probation. You can't write your own program, and that's what you're trying to do. Um, I, I'm going to uh, grant the motion. All right, with regards to time, uh, state, what are you requesting? And defense, what are you requesting? Uh, we're moving to the uh, four years. State? Judge, we'd ask for the minimum. She has been in and out of these different programs. She has at least attempted to comply uh, on multiple occasions. Uh, so we would ask for the minimum. All right, has she paid the $114 restitution? Did you pay the restitution of $114? Um, I didn't claim it, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. All right. Has she successfully completed any inpatient treatment? So it looks like she was disqualified from DDRF. She was medically ineligible. Um, then the felony drug court, she was referred to the Esperanza court. And then the Esperanza court is when we started to have some problems. All right, that's what the court is going to do. The court is going to revoke you. The court will sentence you to four years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. There's a $1,000 fine. Time and money will run concurrent. And I'll recommend the therapeutic community uh, for you. Uh, I can recommend it, but you will have to uh, ask for it because I have no jurisdiction to force them to place you in the therapeutic community. One try. Anything else? Did you review the document entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes. All right. You have a limited right to appeal. That right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you are on community supervision. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes. All right. We can go off the record. Here's the thing. You're going to have to stop using drugs. Otherwise, the last time you use may be the last time you use. When you're released from prison, if you can't find any of the free places for drug treatment, you can always come back here. If I'm here, then I will direct you to a place where you can get treatment. You understand? Yes. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome.